What's going on everybody? Another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures and in today's episode, something pretty cool. Those flares in that car there are going to get ripped off and replaced with some cut safe flares, so let's get into it. Alright, as you can see everybody, I've actually given this car a bit of a polish, um, so all the scratches have been taken out, but these are the stock flares. Something you do have to do is remove these mud guards, but I'm going to remove these guys with some uh, trim removal tools and replace them with some bigger wider cut tape flares because if you can actually see if i put it down the side the actual car um or the tires just to say hang out a little bit so technically i could be done by the cops so that's something i don't want to do and unfortunately the standard flares are actually giving me a bit of grief and becoming loose and all that kind of thing so as you can see they're a little bit loose these are only held in by uh, plastic clips and uh, I've been through a few water holes to uh, find that the front of the car is actually super loose. So I'm going to get these off and show you guys how to install some cut snake flares. Alright, so first things first, what we're going to do is remove the old guards. Underneath these guards, obviously there's going to be a bit of dirt and that kind of stuff under there. So have some wax and grease remover or something like that you can clean it with handy. Um, because what you don't want to do is uh, put the new guard or the new cut snake flare over the dirt because that's going to make things even worse and uh, eventually ruin your paint. But these are nice and simple to remove. As you can, as you can see, I've got a few broken clips, but they're nice and simple. Just put a bit of, a, a bit of leverage, and they will come right off. Just make sure when you're taking it off, you've removed all the clips. And there's one, one bolt I have to remove, this under here, so this under here there's um, one Phillips head screw bolt that you have to remove, the other one's actually broken off, so I didn't have to remove that one. But I'll get a uh, Phillips head, remove that screw, and uh, this one will be ready to come off. Alright, so with that all removed, you can see the, uh, the guard's ready to go, there's a fair bit of grime and muck underneath this. So this is the point where you get under there and give it a bit of a clean because you want this all gone um, before you reinstall the new flare. But um, you want to keep the old flare since I have a ball bar. If you haven't got a ball bar, this is sort of an, a, an irrelevant step. But if you have a ball bar, what you want to do is keep this old flare as a template because you have to actually cut the, uh, the new flare to fit. So as it sort of sits on the, um, the guard, you want to make sure the new flare is roughly about the same size so you've still got the gap between the ball bar and the flare. Um, because you've got to remember the ball bars bolt to the chassis and the chassis moves up so this gap here is to stop this actual issue from the ball bar hitting this um, as you sort of go along. So keep this guy here and um, yeah use him as a template for your next flare. So one flare gone I'll remove the rest uh, as you can sort of see this guy here is a little bit bent so I'll bend him back just because it's been probably put under a little bit of pressure and all the rest of it from um, water crossings and that. But um, I'll bend him back and give this place a bit of a clean up and get it ready for the first flare to be installed. So as always, get your uh, trusty wax and grease remover and give this a uh, bit of a clean. Get rid of all that grime and muck. It's up to you. I mean, you can give it a wash as well if you want to, but I'm not too fussed as long as all the, uh, the major dirt and grime has been removed. As I said, this is up to you how, how much of a good job you want to do. Some people completely skip this step because they think the car's still under, um, the flare's actually still covering the actual um, the dirt, so out of sight, out of mind type situation. But um, I'd like to know, at least I've done it properly. Corrosion and all that kind of stuff brings on rust, so this sort of one last thing you can do to stop any rust sort of happening in your yard so you don't have to replace them down the track. But I'm pretty happy with that, so that's all ready to go now. I'm gonna go get the flare and uh, start making a template. Alright, so this way you want to be a little bit precise on what you're doing because what you're gonna do is cut into your brand new flare and uh, yeah, you don't want to stuff this up. So what I've done is I've got the old flare, I've made it so it's exactly in line um, with the bottom of the new flare. And you can see where the original flare was cut to fit the ball bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give myself about a centimetre's give. Now, when it goes on the car, I can just trim this out. And I'd rather 
give myself a centimeter too much and then I can trim it back to make it perfect rather than cut too short. So if I uh, cut just a centimeter out and then uh, trim when it's on the vehicle, then it's gonna cause a lot less dramas in the long run. All right, so once you uh, have your flare trimmed to shape and you're um, happy with it, done a few test fits um, on, the, on the car, next step is uh, drill holes into these sections here. Now, the reason you're doing this is so you can line up and get ready for uh, drilling your first hole into the panel. So, um, yeah, next step, got to drill holes in all these and uh, get ready to go on the car. Alright, so next stage in the install. So you're going to be sitting like this with a bit of a test fit. Now, in the uh, instructions you get with the kit, it does say you need two people. Um, when I haven't got two people, trust your old uh, 100 mile an hour tape should uh, suffice. Just to keep it still and uh, make sure everything sort of all fits and lines up. All those kind of things you just want to make sure is uh, bang on perfect. And uh, then you can start drilling some holes into the actual guard. So I've actually had a bit of a look at the, um, the clearance. It seems to um, clear the, the tires nice and well, um, which is good because that's one of the main reasons I bought it and it's not gonna flick up rocks all down the side of my car anymore. But, um, but yeah, no, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good fit. Um, as I said, I'll just do some last, last sort of uh, adjustments and that kind of thing and uh, it should be ready to rock and roll to uh, start drilling into the guard. So hopefully I don't stuff it up. But no, it should be fine. But uh, yeah, next step is, is um, Start drilling some holes after you do your test fitting. So let's get into it. Shouldn't uh, rub too much, but I'll just keep an eye on that just in case it uh, rubs a little bit. But uh, yeah, pretty easy to install. As I said, the uh, the most you know hardest part probably is drilling into your um, your perfect guard and uh, making sure they fit. But I think um, the main reason I um, I went ahead and got these is uh, purely for the actual um, offset of the tyres because they do come out a fair bit. And uh, I was getting lots of chips and that kind of thing down the, set down the side of my uh, my car. And I was pretty good, getting pretty sick of it. So next best thing, I could fit mud guards, all that kind of stuff, but I um, wasn't really interested in that. And look, get a bigger, wider guard, and bob your uncle. So look, I'm pretty happy with them. They fit nice and snug. They're literally, they're on there. They, uh, yeah, it's gonna take a bit of a beating to get them off. Um, maybe if you hit a tree or something like that, potentially, yeah, they might, um, might sort of come and be done stuck, but I reckon you're gonna to have to, as I said, there's, there's a bunch of bolts in here, so you're gonna to have to wail on it to get it off. But um, I've seen people like get hammers and like wail on these things to um, see if they can get them off. But uh, no, nah, look, they seem to be pretty good quality. Cut Snake do a pretty good job of these things. So pretty simple installation. Um, I'm gonna to go to the back now. Um, I might just do a bit of a hyperlapse of me doing the back instead of talking you through it. With the back, um, it's the same on each side, but with the back, you just got to make sure where the fuel filler cap is, uh, when you remove that, just make sure your fuel filler cap can open. You don't want to um, have the flare um, get in the way of the fuel filler cap because that'll uh, cause drums every time you have to fill up. So just make sure you do the right thing and um, yeah, pretty much just uh, line it all up and, and make sure you, you know, check, check twice, cut once type thing and you'd be all sweet. But, uh, but yeah, I'll leave you with the hyperlapse of the, um, of the, uh, the rear wheel getting done now and uh, I might just leave it there. But that has been another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. If you have any questions regarding um, installing cut snake flares or anything like that, I just followed the online manual. There's an online manual um, for installing it on the MN Tridents. I just followed that and as I said, just worked around um, with the guards on uh, how to um, get the exact fitment I needed for the, uh, for the cutoff, for the bumper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a bit of a uh, rubber rubber seal to go around here just to clean it up because you just you can see the cut marks obviously from the um from this guy but uh but yeah you know 
I'll uh, get a bit of rubber just to seal it all up so it looks all schmicko. And that's pretty much it, but I'm, I'm super stoked with them. I reckon they look absolutely fantastic. They should give the car a little bit more presence, um, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's gonna stop a uh, bit of an issue with um, with my current situation with the with the offset. But uh, yeah, no, I'm really happy with them. They are uh, nice, and, nice and well built. The only thing, if I could, if I could pick on one thing, is the, um, the seal. If you put, if you, they do say don't tighten it too much, but that doesn't really give you an idea of how tight they should be. But I mean, they're not gonna go anywhere, and they're they're quite tight. But if you uh, push too much on these, you can actually push the seal out, so the seal will actually push out of the uh, of the flare. You can actually sort of see it just doing it here, where it's sort of been pinched. So I might have to sort of pull it off and adjust it and see if I can fix that. But you know, small things, not a big issue. I'm not overly um, stressed about it. But that has been another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. I hope you like this content. I hope you like this video. Um, I put a lot of effort into uh, going and getting these and uh, getting it all sorted. So uh, yeah, as I said, appreciate the. Uh, you guys watching and uh yeah please like please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one see ya